happy Thursday. I hope you had a wonderful week with your students. I'm in early this morning for two reasons. Reason number one, we have NJSLA testing today, so I wanna make sure that the room is set up and I can get into my session okay. And then of course, we still have class, but we have shortened class periods. So I thought today would be a great day to do some demonstrations for my CP kids because they have a quiz on rates tomorrow. So I wanna make sure that they can kind of apply what they're seeing in some phenomena to rates and basically understand the factors that affect rate. I have about four demos that I want to do, so I have to spend some time setting that up. I will do that. And then, of course, I want to talk to you about the AP project that I'm doing with my kids. I'm really proud of what I'm doing with them this year. I think it's going to be a really great project. We're still in the beginning stages, but um, I feel like it's going really well, and so I can't wait to give you all the details. I'll be sure to check in with you guys a little bit later on. Well, it's the end of the day. It was a very fast day. Today went by so quick. I think that um, having these shortened periods really make things go by so fast. We had two and a half hours of testing today. So we did the science assessment today and yesterday. And then on Monday and Tuesday, they had math and English and it was just a full week of testing, a lot of testing, but the kids overall took it in stride. Um, I think arguably I'm a little bit more stressed than they are when they're actually taking these assessments just because I'm so worried I'm going to do something wrong or like the technology isn't going to work, but all went well and I'm happy that it's over so we can cross another thing off the list. My students were very engaged today, especially my CP kids. They were very into the demos that I was doing to talk about factors affecting rate. Um, those four demos fit so nicely into a 24 minute period. It was great. I gave them just like a quick little like do now handout that went with it where they had to just write down some answers and observations of the different types of demos that I did. But really the most important thing that I wanted them to understand is being able to identify the factor that's affecting rate and how that factor will cause the reaction rate to increase or decrease. And so overall, um, I would say their favorite one was definitely the, um, well, I call it sawdust, but I think we all know it's like a podium powder. So they love showing the effect on surface area and on rate. So I just take a wood block and then I took some lycopodium powder and the students were able to understand that, you know, ultimately the lycopodium powder has a um, greater surface area. And so that's why we're going to see the rate increase with the combustion. Um, and so that that was like a lot of oohs and ahs. They thought the glow stick one was pretty cool too, you know, seeing the fact that or when we put it in hot water, we're going to see those glow sticks glow a lot more brightly than in cold water. Um, they did like the formation of sulfur. That was kind of a cool reaction, but that was like concentration. So not a lot of oohs and ahs there, but it definitely, again, supported this idea of collision theory and more collisions leads to a greater rate. Um, and so overall, I think that was a really good set of demos for them just to link what we're observing to what's happening on the particle level. And that's that's always my goal. And so I also wanted to talk to you besides about those demos, I wanted to talk to you about what I'm doing with my AP classes. So many of you have been asking me like, what do you do with your AP kids after the exam? And there are so many things that you can do, like which ones are gonna make them the most engaged? Well, you know me, I love to engage my students using choice. I'm really excited to show you the project choices that I made for my AP students. And so I made a project choice board for them to choose from six different projects. So the projects are a book review, Chemagination, podcast, careers in science, learning about nuclear chemistry, and organic chemistry. You'll see on the left-hand side, those are all the different projects, and then on the right-hand side, that's reserved for them to be checking in with me weekly. So they have a total of three weeks to complete their project. So I'm gonna go through each of these projects one by one just to give you some ideas. But like I said, the, my students can choose from any of these projects to do over the next three weeks. Now the first project is not something that I created. This is something that actually a friend of mine and colleague, Bethany Lau, told me about. She actually accepted a long-term sub position as an AP chemistry teacher in New Jersey as well. And so we were talking and she showed me this really cool book review idea. And so this is an amazing idea. Um, this is something that I think is gonna be very relaxing for the students that you know wanna kind of take it a little bit easier. And so basically in the book review, I am having the students create a book from an approved book list. 
A lot of these books are already in our library. I also have some actually sitting in my classroom, like on a bookshelf right here. So I did allow the students to take them home and read them and whatnot. But basically what they're gonna do is they're gonna create a book review in the format of Amazon or Goodreads. And then they also have to keep a reading log. And so this reading log I really like, I like a lot because in this reading log, it really encourages the students to be creative. So if I click on this, what you'll see is that the students have to select from a list of like reading notes and a reading reflection. And I like this so much because it's not just like your standard notes, like the students can choose to write, they can choose to draw, um, it really gives them some you know, academic freedom, some creativity, gives them a chance to really think about the science behind what they're reading in the book. And so the reading log they have to keep and I will collect that when they're done. There is a rubric with each project with the exception of the new content, like the organic chemistry and the nuclear. But with every other project, there is a um, rubric. So with the rubric, basically they have uh, the rate on a scale of four and there are five categories. So every single project is worth 20 points. And so if the students just simply click, they will be able to see all the different criteria that need to be met for that particular project. The second project that I really like is this Chemagination. So Chemagination is put on by the Princeton section of ACS. And so basically the students have to create a Chem Matters article that includes the actual article and a cover for an innovation that occurs many years in the future. And basically the students have to choose from certain topics and think about the chemistry involved and then how you can use that chemistry to help solve people's problems. And so my students are spending a lot of time on this already. I'm very impressed. Some of the students actually started it even before I assigned this in the choice board. And so they're gonna submit their artifacts of the Chem Matters article, the Chem Matters cover, and then they do need to have like certain criteria met. Like there needs to be like three technical resources. So they're actually gonna be reading some really nice literature in order to understand the chemistry of what's going on. And um, I just think overall, it's gonna be a very enriching experience for the students to take all the chemistry they've learned all year and relate it to their innovation. The next project that my students can do is to create a podcast. So this is one that they can work with another student. And by the way, they can work with two other students in the Chem Imagination project. Um, the book review is completely done by yourself. And then the podcast, they can work with another student. So in the podcast, basically they're gonna pick a uh, chemistry related phenomenon, and then they're going to record their podcast using some tech tool of their choice. They can use synth, they can use online voice recorder, um, if they feel more comfortable using another type of um, you know, recorder, that's fine. They can absolutely do that. I know these are a little bit basic, but they are FERPA compliant, so I need to make sure that I do that. And so what they do is they have to analyze two podcasts from Chemistry for Your Life. And if you haven't listened to Chemistry for Your Life, this podcast is awesome. I put it on when I'm making dinner. I put it on when I'm washing dishes. It is just so interesting, and I have such a good time listening. And basically, these two people are having a conversation about chemistry. And so you've got the um, PhD chemist trying to explain to someone you know, the chemistry of different things in their life. And so it just makes it so easy to understand for anyone. You don't necessarily have to be a chemistry teacher or a chemist to get it. And so I had my students select two episodes from this podcast. They have to rate what they liked, and then they have to summarize this information on this sheet. So this analysis worksheet looks like this. And basically it asks the students to rate it and then talk about what they liked, talk about what they learned. And hopefully this gives them some insight of things that they should include. You know, obviously you wanna teach people something. You wanna be enthusiastic. You want it to be really interesting for their listeners. I wanted them to have experience with a podcast in case they don't typically listen to them. The next project is called Careers in Science. And so this was geared more towards my senior level students. So my seniors, they're obviously gonna be going to college and then going into the workforce. And so I wanted them to have an opportunity to explore some of the careers in science if that's what they wanted to do. And so in this project, they are going to create a slideshow and a screencast about a science-related career of their choosing. They will perform research on the career and they have to create a CV for a scientist in this area of work and create a screencast describing the career. 
Now, as far as the artifacts they will submit, they have to submit a career information organizer. So this is something that I made for them just to have an idea of like, you know, the types of information that they need to include in their summary and their screencast. And so basically it asks them questions like, you know, a person who has this job does the following relates to their field. And then what do the people do that does not relate to their field? And then I ask them, you know, where could they work with this type of job, the education, the salary. So there's a lot of things that they have to complete, but hopefully this is kind of used as a way for them to think about like, you know, if they chose to go into this career, what would it actually be like? After that, I do ask them to pick a scientist and to create a CV for the scientists. And there are some examples. There's a really great website that I asked the students to use. I thought this was really great. Um, it just gives them some ideas of you know what a CV is because they're eventually going to have to write one for themselves, especially if they're you know choosing to go into a science-related field. So I thought this would be a really good exercise for them to design a CV for another scientist that is of interest to them. All right, we're almost done. So then the two last projects are actually related to learning new content. Now, I'm not a big project person. I have to say, if I were to choose something, I would probably choose something where I'm learning something new. So I gave them the option to learn about nuclear chemistry or to learn about organic chemistry. So this really isn't a project, but there are some resources that I am providing. So the nuclear chemistry is all the resources from that are completely provided by CK12. So CK12, I've talked about a lot on my channel. It is a wonderful resource for students. And you know, since we do not cover nuclear chemistry in AP Chem, I thought this was a great option for them. What's so nice about it is I didn't have to create anything for this. I didn't have to do a single thing for this. I just assigned the sections in Google Classroom and I am done. But what's so beautiful about CK12 is that it has everything the students need to learn about it. And it provides it in really short little snippets and then it also gives some questions like the adaptive practice that they include. Basically, it's just multiple choice questions that ask them questions about the content that they learned. You'll notice that for this one, the artifacts that they're submitting is a summary notebook. That's something I've been doing all year with them where they provide you know, the notes from the CK12. They also have to complete the adaptive practices. And then there is a quiz in CK12 that will be administered the day that the projects are due. The very last choice is for my students to engage with organic chemistry. So I thought this was a really good um, choice for them, especially if they're going into college and they just want to kind of get a little sampling of what organic chemistry would be like. So we are covering four sections from our textbook. The difference between this and the nuclear is obviously it's organic chemistry, but also I did create a lot of Ed Puzzle videos for this. So I created four Ed Puzzle videos for the students. I did not assign this through CK12. And then this is kind of run similar to the format of the class in that I created the Ed Puzzles and then the students engage with OWL or online web learning, which comes with our textbook. The students also have access to some tutorials and simulations. These don't need to be in their summary notebooks though. As far as the artifacts that they submit, very similar to what you saw in the nuclear chemistry, they have to submit their summary notebook, they have to submit their problem notebook, and then they do have a quiz specifically on OWL now, because like I said, those are all the questions, that's where they're coming from, and then that will also take place on the day that the projects are due. Okay, so that's pretty much it for me. I, again, am just giving you some options of things that you could do with your kids. If you've done any of these, like I'm really interested if anybody out there has done the book review before, or had your kids make a podcast I'm just wondering like how'd it go for you this is the first time I'm trying something like this but I'm really excited to see their projects I think they're gonna do a great job I mean I'm loving the stuff that I'm seeing already it looks amazing um, I'll be sure to update you guys probably around the first week of June on how it's going but for right now I can definitely see that they are super engaged it's definitely something that they're interested in and I think that they're gonna get a lot out of it it's definitely nice to mix it up and have a nice change of pace and I think this project is doing exactly that. Well, I am going to get out of here, but I hope you have a wonderful rest of your weekend, and I'll be sure to check in with you guys next week.